Uh, so we're going to be um, getting this bed ready to be a grow bed. And what we've done is installed uh, a uniseal, which looks like this. And it basically um, makes the hole there watertight once you put a three quarter inch pipe in. So the next step is just to work the three quarter inch pipe in. It does help if you put a little bit of a bevel on the side that's going through. Basically, it just pushes through like that. And uh, this standing pipe is, we've got plenty of room in there. And see, so we've gone, we've gone through about this much. Um, and that's gonna be the drain, which we will put an elbow uh, on. And what you need in a, in a grow bed where we're doing flood and drain aquaponics is you need a 90 degree turn and then we're gonna put a pipe out this way in just a little bit. And that really helps the siphon start and stop uh, on time. This is basically gonna be the height of the water uh, when it's filling up. So the design is that water comes in and fills this bed up and then eventually it'll drain out through this standing pipe and back into the fish tank. Um, and so you wanna set that standing pipe um, about an inch down from the top of wherever you think your media is gonna be because you wanna keep the surface of the bed dry. You don't want the water peeking through because uh, that will create algae if the if the water if the surface gets wet okay. sun plus water is always algae so the top portion of the media whatever it is in there or whatnot should be dry and keeping this below that will will help that process that. yeah okay. and then so and then this is half of so this is the standing pipe and if you just let the water flow in here uh the water would come to this level and it would drain out and it would constantly stay at that level so in order but what we're after is a bed that will fill up and then drain out completely and then fill up and drain out completely again. And part of the reason you want that is every plant needs water, but every plant also needs oxygen, oxygen, air. And so that action of filling the bed up and then draining it all out is how the roots get their um, oxygen. Okay. There's other implications uh, in terms of how it cleans the water for the fish, which we can talk about later. Um, but we want this, so this is the beginnings of our bell siphon, and we want this to be about an inch taller than our standing pipe is. Let's give ourselves a little bit of wiggle room it's for about adjustments. Four and an eighth. Okay, so let's go up to about five and a half. It used to be trusty, now it's just rusty. <laughs> Kids, don't do this at home. <laughs> <laughs> Have an adult do this. Yes. <laughs> uh, well, Tim's kind of doing that part of it though. You know, one of the things is what's the ratio between the drain pipe uh, and the size of the um, bell siphon? And what we're using is we're using three quarter inch pipe as the drain. We're actually using two inch pipe for the bell siphon, but you could go down to one and a half inch pipe if that's what you got. Uh, mainly you want a one to two ratio um, in that. And then we're also using four inch pipe that's gonna serve as a media guard to keep all of the lava rock that we're gonna use to fill the bed away from the standing pipe. Okay, so now uh, let's just put our lead on that and that's to prevent any water from coming out yeah this is what creates the bell siphon so what's going to happen when you go like this is the water will come up if this was off or if this was open the water would come up and it would start flowing out the drain and it would stay at this level but with a bell siphon uh it'll fill up and then it'll it'll come up higher and hit the top of that bell siphon and then start draining out at such a speed that it's going to suck out all the water mm. but inside this chamber is going to be full with water right so it'll drain the bed all the way down to where this line is um, until the siphon can get air in it and then once the air goes in it'll break the siphon and then the bed will begin to fill up again So this is kind of important, the height of this hole. Yes. This would determine the, um, uh, the point in which the, the siphon would be broken. Yes, and so it basically, uh, your bed is gonna be, always have water always up to that. about there, right? And so you wanna kind of make sure that as you're, as you're building your bell siphon, you're thinking about, again, the whole point of flood and drain is, the, is that letting that water in and getting the, the water out so that you don't get root rot and things like that. So if you made this hole way up here, then it would always have that much water and you could experience some rot depending on what sort of plants you Exactly. Yeah, and one of the great things I love about aquaponics is it's so good for kind of use what you have 
you know, like you don't have to go out and buy special parts or special kits. You can use whatever pipe you have laying around. Yeah. And as long as you Scraps. follow kind of basic rules about proportion, uh, you should be pretty good. And that two to one ratio you were talking about was this standing pipe in yeah. regards to the bell siphon on top. The, the bell diameter. siphon should be at least two inch, uh, two times the diameter of this. And then you try to get a media guard that is two times the size of the pipe you're using for a bell siphon. So that's essentially the drain assembly uh, of a aquaponics flood and drain grow bed. Okay, so the next part is to um, bring the water from the fish tank into the grow bed. Uh, and so what we're going to do, if you want to look on this side right nearby, we have a very small opening between our grow bed and our fish tank. And because we're doing sort of the simplest form, which is where you just place the grow bed right on top of the fish tank. Um, and so when we go about doing that, we're using a, uh, this is a Danner mag pump. Um, it's a 700 gallons um, per hour that it will circulate through the system. And this is a 100 gallon tank, uh, fish tank, uh, or stock tank. So basically the pump is gonna go down on this end uh, and then you plug it in out of there. And then we have this kind of assembly rigged up. Um, this particular tank has a half inch adapter. So we just got one of those PVC adapters. It's a male connection. And then you bring that pipe stand up. And then what we've got here in this assembly, we're gonna put a T here because uh, we want some of the water from this pump to go up into the grow bed, but we want some of the water to return back into the fish tank so that it can help aerate the water. Uh, and so for that, we're going to use a T, and then we've just got a small piece of half-inch pipe, um, a valve, a check, um, an on-off valve so that we can adjust the flow of the water, and then a little 45-degree angle that'll push the water back into the um, fish tank. Now, if we wanted more aeration or we wanted it to kind of disrupt the surface of the water more, we could put a half inch pipe, that, I mean a half inch cap that we just drill three or four holes in uh, to limit how the flow of the water comes out of that pipe. And then from there, we're gonna go, again, just a little bit of pipe uh, up to another valve like that. And you're just gonna and I put this in tightly. Now, I don't use glue on any of my aquaponic systems uh, because I can. I want to be able to adjust them if they're not working quite right. Mm -hmm. But once we finally fit this all together, we will put um, that Teflon tape mm -hmm. uh, between the um, pipe and the uh, fittings. There you go. Okay, so Tim, will you put the um, row bed back on where it belongs? And I'm just going to angle it like this. And all we're really trying to do is make sure that we can Again, control the speed of the water going back into the fish tank from there. And then also, if you'll see on this side, uh, there's a valve there so that we can control the speed of the water coming back into the grow bed. Um, later on, when we talk about how to, when we start filling this bed and testing it, we're gonna make some fine tune adjustments uh, to make sure that the ebb and flow is happening like we want it to. And some of those adjustments happen with the speed of the water coming in. Some of it has to do with that right angle I was talking about earlier from the drain pipe. And, and some of it has to do with how much water we're letting come through the bell cycle. So we'll talk through some of those issues as we get the bed filled. Now the fun part, you get to, we get to grab the cinder and fill up the bed. So we've got the bed and the water's coming in from the pump up here. You can see underneath we have another valve and that allows water to go back into the tank and just aerate the tank a little bit. Um, but right here, see how the water is nearly to the top of the standing pipe. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the bell siphon over and we'll show you what it looks like when it starts to drain. But see how deep the water, once the media is in here, there won't be that much water, but basically the water will rise all the way to this level. And then as soon as it fills up, you'll start to see the water trickling out through that drain pipe right there. Oh, there it goes. So the water's just slowly now coming over the top of the drain pipe. And what's happening is water's continuing to fill up in that cap in the bell siphon and you'll start to see the water come out faster and faster and then eventually it'll be full bore in the siphon and there, there it goes. goes that's the full siphon kicking in and if you look on top you can see the water uh, draining out pretty fast and then eventually you'll be able to see this water level as it drops down into the holes that were made in the side of this bell siphon when it hits those holes in the siphon will cut off. 
Right, and the air, when, when the siphon is able to take in air, uh, the siphon will cut off and then it'll start the process of filling again. So you can see the water level is going down, 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 well below, you know, the standing pipe is up here, right, the top mm -hmm. of that pipe. But because of this bell siphon, it's suctioning everything out. And if you actually look at the drain pipe, it's still going full bore the way it was when it first started. So it's going to continue like that until, uh, again, until the water level reaches the top of that and it starts to suck in air. So if you listen, you can hear the air sucking in. Actually, the flow stays pretty fast until it gets that air and then it sputters. So it doesn't really trickle off until, so there, the siphon has been broken and then uh, it's not draining anymore and the bed will... And it repeats that. Yep, and then the bed will fill back up and... It just keeps doing that. It just keeps doing that and you really want to shoot water, for... Water, air, water, air. Yep, and you want it to cycle through at least four times an hour. So okay. some of the calculations related to, you know, how fast you want the water coming in, etc., is that you want the water to cycle through the system at least four times in the hour. So like how many bags of this do you need for this type of tub? You gotta find out. Yeah, we're about to take it out. Eight. Eight? I am, my beds are about two by three, two by three by a foot deep, and they take uh, six. So I'm just packing it up around this so that the, so that the guard doesn't move. Here is the completed grow bed at its flood stage. As you can see, a little more cinder needs to be added to prevent the water from showing at the surface. As Jade stated earlier, this situation will cause algae to grow. See, look, it's getting cleaner already. Uh, all that dust is settling down to the bottom.